In this video, I want to explain the relationship between hierarchical factor models and bifactor models. And I want to do this based on latent state trait models as an example. Latent state trait models are longitudinal structural equation models that allow us to determine the trait and state components in psychological and other measurements. And those models can be specified as either hierarchical factor models or as bifactor type models. And so they can serve as an example for that relationship. I want to show you a hierarchical latent state trait model first and then show you how this can be reformulated as a bifactor model that is an equivalent model. So in the latent state trait model, as a hierarchical factor model, we have first order factors that we call latent state factors. Those are indicated as tau 1, tau 2, and tau 3 here. And in this design, we have three measurement occasions or time points and three measures or observed variables yit at each time point. So the first order model has these latent state factors and According to latent state trait theory, latent state factors contain both trait and state residual components. And so this, these components can be modeled by imposing a second order factor or a second order factor structure where we have a trait factor psi that accounts for the across time covariances of the latent state factor. So the trait factor represents what is stable across time or person specific. You could also say it represents between person differences in the trait scores. And so then in addition, we have first order residuals that we indicate as zeta. Those are so-called state residual factors or state residual variables that account for residual variance in the latent state factors that is not explained by the trait factor. And therefore, the latent state residuals, zeta 1, zeta 2, and zeta 3, account for situation-specific effects and or person-by-situation interaction. So this model allows us to separate trait and state residual variance components by introducing the second-order trait factor and those state residual factors. And so now we can describe this model with an equation for the second-order factor structure in which the first order factors tau t are a function of the trait factor psi with a second order factor loading gamma. So gamma t indicates the second order factor loading here. You can see the first loading is fixed to one for identification like we would do typically in a first order measurement model as well. I omitted intercepts here from the model so there are no in additive constants assuming that the factors are centered. However, that could also be included. We could include a mean structure. We could have intercepts in the second order factor model as well. Furthermore, we have a first order measurement equation. And here again, I omitted the intercepts that we would normally consider just simply for simplicity because they don't add anything to that discussion of how the hierarchical factor model is related to the bifactor model. And so I omitted the additive constant. So we have here the um, manifest observed variables yit are a function of a factor loading um, lambda t times tau t plus epsilon it. So those are the first order loadings lambda t. And in this case, I'm assuming that the first order loadings are time invariant. So you can see that the same variable has the same loading at each time point. That's not required. It's not required for a latent state trait model or for this discussion that we're um, looking at here for hierarchical versus bifactor models. So these loadings could also be freely estimated and the whole thing would still work in the same way. You can see that I assumed here that the second order factor loadings are not time invariant, that the trait loadings change over time or, or that they can change. And Again, they could be time invariant and you would still have the same discussion. It would simplify the whole thing a little bit, as we will see, but it doesn't really matter whether those loadings are invariant or not. So now, how do we get from this second order or hierarchical factor model to a bifactor type model? And in order to understand that um, or to follow this easily, it is a good idea to look at the equations and the algebra so say behind those two equations. And so one thing that we can very easily do is combine these two equations into one. And that's what I want to show you on this next slide here. So here you can see again, we have our second order 
factor equation or the second order factor measurement model where the latent state first order factors tau t are measured or are measuring a common trait factor with loading gamma t plus a state residual factor zeta t. And now what we can do is we can insert what we have here for tau t into the first order measurement equation for the observed variables where tau t appears as the factor that the manifest variables are measuring. So all that we, all the things that we have here for tau t can be inserted here. And so then in that way, we can combine those two equations into one. So what do we get if we insert what we have for tau in the second order measurement model into the first order measurement model? Then we get an equation that looks like that. Yit is equal to that first order loading lambda t times gamma t times uh, xi plus zeta t plus epsilon i t. And then we can expand and then we get y i t is equal to lambda t times gamma t times trait xi plus lambda t times zeta state residual plus measurement error epsilon i t. So you can see now that um, those equations have been combined into one and the tau factor so to say disappeared. So the first order factors are no longer part of the measurement model. Of course, they're still there, but they will not be depicted anymore in the model. Now, what we can do is we can simply take this equation here and then um, depict that as a path diagram. And then you have a bifactor model. So let's take a look at that as well. So here again is the equation that we just derived, where it's a combined equation of this hierarchical factor model. And this is what it looks like when we depict it for that same design as a path diagram. So again, same thing. We have three time points. We have three measures at each time point. And now you can see there are no more tau factors, but now the observed variables load directly onto the common trait factor and onto the state residual factor. And the interesting thing here is the loading structure. You can see that we have a complex loading structure where for the first measurement occasion the trade loadings are the same as the state residual loadings and that's because the gamma at time point one is fixed to one for identification and so for time point one then there's no gamma loading here that needs to be taken into account because gamma is just simply equal to one so but notice that the loadings have to be constrained to be the same on the trade and on the state residuals when you formulate this model like this when you want to have an equivalent bifactor model that's equivalent to the hierarchical structure then you have to first of all think of implementing those co equality constraints on the loadings now time point two looks more complex because at time point two gamma is not fixed to one so gamma is now freely estimated potentially at least and then so you have to take that into account and so when you now specify the model, the loadings for that time point here will not be equal to the loadings on zeta 2, but instead they'll be constrained to be lambda 2, so that same loading times gamma 2, so times that loading that you have here for the first variable. For the first variable, you have no lambda here because this lambda is fixed to one. And so then you have to tell a structure equation modeling program that you want to have these loadings constrained in this way as the product. So this is a product of loadings and that's not so trivial. For example, in M plus you can do this by using the model constraint option. And I'm going to show that in a separate video how to do that in M plus. So with model constraint, you can implement those types of nonlinear constraints on these loadings here to get them to be the product of other loadings in your model. For the third time, points is, time point is similar, except that now you have gamma three here because that's the third um, loading on the trait. And so this is how it would work. You have then exactly the same model. You would get the same model fit the same parameter estimates, except that you wouldn't get the tau parameter estimates. The tau parameter estimates then are functions of um, other parameters. But it's the exact same model if you specify it in this way with the same degrees of freedom and the same model fit. Now, of course, you can also specify a bifactor model without these types of loading constraints. So you could just simply freely estimate 
all those trade loadings and you could just simply freely estimate all those state residual factor loadings. And that's fine. However, then it's no longer an equivalent model. So then it's no longer equivalent to the hierarchical model because then it does not include those implicit constraints on the loadings that are um, implied by the second order or hierarchical factor model. So if you want a bifactor model that is equivalent to the hierarchical factor model, then you have to implement those complex constraints on the loadings here. Otherwise, it will not be equivalent. And then um, if you estimate the loadings freely instead of constraining them in this way, then you would have a model that is less restricted and that has fewer degrees of freedom. That's why I call this model here a restricted bifactor model because it is restricted in this way with regard to the loadings and it is not the most general bifactor model that you could have. The most general bifactor model would just simply estimate all those loadings on the trade freely and then all those loadings on the zeta residual factors also freely and independent of the loadings on the general trade factor. I hope you found this helpful to uh, see a little bit clearer with regard to the uh, relationship between hierarchical factor models and bifactor models. It's very confusing to a lot of people and my advice is always if you're confused about that, just write out the measurement equations and then combine those measurement equations and then you'll be less confused about the relationship because you can just simply look at those equations and then uh, represent those equations as path diagrams and then, you, then you'll see what's going on and how those models are related. If you like these types of tutorials on advanced methods, please subscribe to this channel. Also check out the description for other videos. I have more videos on this channel on latent state trade models. For example, if you're interested more in latent state trade models, I also offer workshops on longitudinal structural equation modeling and specifically on latent state trade models that you can find in the description. Also, you can leave a comment in the comment section to see what other or let me know what other topic you would like to see discussed and I'll see you next time.